What we've done over the past year is dramatically simplify the device. So we, 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 about a year ago, we had a device which uh, had a, a m multiple parts, including a piece that it had to sort of sit behind your ear. Um, and it was, it, was, it was complex, and you, and you wouldn't still look totally normal. You'd have a thing behind your ear. So um, we've simplified this to simply something that is uh, about the size of a large coin. Um, and it, it goes uh, in your skull, replaces a piece of skull, um, and the wires uh, uh, then, then connect uh, within a few centimeters or about an inch away from the device. Um, and this is sort of what it looks like. So, yeah. <laughs> this is our little device. Uh, it does, that, that thing at the bottom is just to hold the threads in place because they're just like little fine wire, wires. Um, I mean, fr frankly, to, to sort of simplify this, uh, what, what we're, <laughs> I mean, it's more complicated than this, but it's, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. So, um, and it's, uh, yeah, so our, our current prototype, version 0 0.9, has about 1,000 channels. Uh, so that's you know, about 100 times better than the, the next best um, uh, consumer device that's available. And it's a 23 millimeters by 8 millimeters. It actually uh, fits quite nicely in your skull because your, your skull is about 10 millimeters thick. So uh, it fits, it's, it goes flush with your skull, it's invisible, and all you can see afterwards is that there's a tiny scar. And if it's under your hair, you can't see it at all. In fact, I could have a Neuralink right now, and you wouldn't know. Maybe I do. So, uh, and it, it's also got all, all the things that you would expect to see, the sensors you'd expect to see in a smartwatch uh, or a phone, like uh, notional measurement, temperature, pressure. Uh, so there's actually a lot of functions that this device could do uh, r related to monitoring your health and warning you about a possible heart attack or stroke or other uh, damage, as well as uh, sort of convenience features like playing music. Um, you do a lot. Um, it's sort of like if your phone went at your brain or something. Um, yeah, maybe that's not a great analogy. Um, Anyway, so it's also inductively charged, so um, it's charged in the same way that you, char you charge a smartwatch or a phone. Um, and so you can use it all day, uh, charge it at night, and have full functionality. So you would really, um, you know, it would be, it would be completely seamless, uh, and uh, yeah, no wires. Uh, in terms of getting a link, so that, um, we, you need to have the device, uh, a great device, and you also need to have a great robot that uh, puts in the, uh, the electrodes and uh, does the surgery. So you want the surgery to be as, as automated uh, and, and as possible, and the only way you can achieve the level of precision that's needed is with an advanced robot. Um, so we're really looking for uh, great people who can help develop both the device uh, and the robot. Um, and we feel confident about getting the, uh, the link procedure, the, the installation of a link, done in under an hour. Um, so you can basically go in in the morning and leave the hospital in the afternoon. And it can be done without general anesthesia. So in terms of getting a link, like I said, it's essentially uh, you open a piece of skull. Um, you remove uh, about a coin-sized piece of skull. Uh, and then the robot inserts the electrodes. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, then the device replaces the portion of skull that was removed, and we, we Basically, close that up with actually super glue, which is how a lot of wounds are closed, and uh, and then you can just walk around right after right afterwards. It's pretty cool. So this is our surgical robot. And we actually ultimately want this robot to do uh, essentially the entire surgery. Uh, so in, in everything from, from in, incision, uh, removing the, the skull, inserting the electrodes, placing the device, um, and then um, closing things up and having you ready to, to leave. So we want to have a fully automated system. And we've, to be clear, this, this robot d does actually work. <laughs> we've used it for uh, all of the uh, implantations. 
Um, so this, this shows you um, at sort of a close-up view, uh, which I think is actually not too gruesome, uh, of the electrodes being inserted in the brain. And if you look closely, you'll see that um, it's, a, it's a little counterintuitive that uh, if the electrodes are inserted very carefully, that there is no bleeding. Um, and so the, uh, if you have very tiny electrodes, and if they're inserted very carefully, so that the robot actually images the brain and makes sure to avoid any veins or arteries so that the electrodes can be inserted um, with no noticeable damage. So you will have no noticeable uh, neural damage uh, in inserting the link. Yeah, it, like you sort of think like if you stab something with a wire, surely it will bleed. But actually, at a, at a really small scale, it does not. So does it actually work? And uh, what I'm excited to show you, um, I'll call it like the, the, the three little pigs demo. So what we have in pen number one is Joyce. Uh, and she does not have an implant. So here's Dorothy. Um, and in the case of Dorothy, um, Dorothy used to have an implant, and then we removed the implant. So this is uh, an, a very important thing to uh, demonstrate, is reversibility. So if you, if you have a neural link, and then you decide you don't want it, or you want to get an upgrade, and the neural link is removed, um, is it removed in such a way that you are still healthy and happy afterwards? And what Dor Dorothy illustrates is that you can put in the neural link, remove it, and be healthy, happy, and indistinguishable from a normal pig. Oh, thanks, Dorothy. <laughs> well, is, is Gertrude still back in the thing? Yeah. Okay, we need to bring Gertrude out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the beauty of live demos. This is real live demo. <laughs> All right, connects to neurons that are uh, in her snout. So whenever she snuffles around and touches something with her snout, the, that sends out uh, neural spikes, which are detected here. Um, and so on the screen, um, you can see uh, each, each of the, the spikes from the 1,024 electrodes. And, and then if, you, if she, yeah, she snuffles around, touches this snout in the ground, or you kind of feed her some food, pigs love food, um, then uh, you, you can see the neurons um, will fire much more than when you're not touching this snout. And uh, that's what's making the, the beeping sound. All right, cool. So as you can see, uh, we have a healthy and happy pig, um, initially shy, but obviously high energy and, and uh, you know, kind of loving life. And uh, she's had the implant for two months. So this is a healthy and happy pig with an implant that is two, month old, two months old and working well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, we actually have, I hope sure <laughs> this works, is... So we said, well, what if we do two Neuralink implants? Um, and we've been able to uh, do uh, dual Neuralink implants uh, in, th um, actually, I think three pigs at this point. And we have a couple of them here. Um, and we've been able to show that you can actually have multiple Neuralinks implanted. Um, and again, healthy and happy and indistinguishable from a normal pig. So, um, so it's possible to have multiple links in your, in your head and have them all be sending out signals, and you're working well. All right. <laughs> Phew. All right, so we just showed you a demonstration of uh, reading brain activity. And um, let's see, you probably see that. Um, as I was saying, uh, each of those dots represents a neural spike. And the, um, the, the blue chart at the bottom is showing an accumulation of neural spikes in that region. So uh, in, in, in terms of additional uh, brain reading activity, uh, when we have, um, say, um, one of our pigs on a treadmill, <laughs> pig on a treadmill. <laughs> um, it's a funny, funny concept, really. Um, and we uh, take the, the readings from the neurons and we try to predict the posi position of the joints. Um, and so we say we have the predicted position of the joints, and then we, we measure the actual position of the joints. You can see that they're almost exactly aligned. So we're able with um, a wireless neural, imp neural implant to actually predict the position of, of all of the limbs uh, in the pig's body uh, with, with very high accuracy.
Now, in terms of, of writing to the brain or stim stimulating neurons, uh, we also need pr precise control of the electric field in, in space and time. We need a wide range of current for different brain regions. Uh, some, some regions require delicate stimulation, some require a lot of current, uh, and, and you want obviously no harm to the brain over time. Um, and the way we, um, uh, part of the way we analyze the, the stimula stimulating neurons uh, is with a two photon uh, microscopy. I, I always have trouble pronouncing that microscopy. Um, and uh, it's very impressive technology. You can actually literally see in real time. Uh, how the neurons are firing. So uh, the, the red sort of things are the neurons, the red, red sort of flashing things are the neurons uh, firing, or I should say the, uh, uh, the electrodes firing. So the red things are electrodes firing, and then the green are the neuron bodies responding to uh, the current from the electrode. So you can see them lighting up different brain regions. Uh, and then by carefully controlling the electric field, you can actually have one electrode uh, influence possibly 1,000 or 10,000 neurons. So although you might only have 1,000 electrodes implanted, you could be influencing um, millions of neurons. And this is just a, a similar chart showing uh, stimulation at different uh, power levels. So like I said, for the initial device, it's read-write in every channel. Uh, with about 1,024 channels, all-day battery life, uh, recharges overnight, uh, has quite a long uh, range. So you can you can you can have uh, the range uh, the range being to your phone. I should say that's um, kind of an important thing. This would connect to uh, your phone, um, and actually the so the the application uh, would be on your phone, and the and it would be communicating by by essentially Bluetooth low energy to the device in your head. Um, that's why I say it, in a lot of ways it is like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. So, um, and then, like I said, it, you would not be able to see the device at all. It would, you would look completely normal and just have a small scar uh, under your hair. And we're making good progress towards clinical studies. Um, I'm excited to announce that we received a, a breakthrough device designation from the FDA in July, uh, thanks to the hard work of the Neuralink team. So, So I want to be clear, we're working closely with the FDA, um, and we'll, um, we'll be extremely rigorous. In fact, we will, um, we will significantly, significantly exceed the minimum FDA guidelines for uh, safety. We will make this uh, as safe as possible. Um, you know, just as with, with Tesla, while it is legally possible to ship a one-star car, at Tesla, we, the only cars we make are five stars in, in every category. Uh, so, uh, we, we actually maximize safety and we'll take the same approach here at Neuralink.